video, I'm going to teach you how to properly stain a fence. And we got a fence right here. We power washed it a few days ago, and we're using a water-based solid color stain to stain this fence. And I'm using an airless sprayer and a brush to spray and back brush this fence. I'm going to show you that process, how we go about doing this to make it look like a professional did it, make it look beautiful and brand new again. So stay tuned. So like I said, we got this fence power washed. We power washed it a few days ago and now we're staining it. And it doesn't have to be 100% thoroughly dry because we're using a water-based stain. So we're doing the staining process now and I've got an airless sprayer set up over there with my solid color stain and I'm using a airless sprayer right here. I'm using a 515 tip and using about an 18 inch to 20 inch gun extension right here that'll keep me away from the fence and not absorbing as much overspray and dust that's flying in the air and it makes it a lot easier so I can reach to the bottom of the fence and the top of the fence and I'm using a nice stain brush, stiff bristle brush stain brush and the back brushing while you're staining it while it's saturated is extremely important to give it that professional look and a nice good even solid color spraying it if you don't back brush it it'll look really dry it'll show lap marks all over the place and just doesn't look really good so I'm gonna start this process I've been working my way right along here I'm gonna show you what it looks like I'm gonna be doing this panel right here and I'm gonna be spraying just a short section and I actually saturate those pickets a lot with stain I get a lot of stain on there so I have something to actually back brush if it's too dry and you're not putting enough stain on there you won't have anything to back brush so that's the trick is to get uh, enough stain on there it's way better to get too much than not enough but you'll start to get the feel of just how much you need to actually back brush it and I control my overspray if it's a windy day by using a cardboard shield and shield holder and these tools all these tools I'm using my my spray gun my brushes cardboard shield holders you can all find those videos or all those tools in my tool store or you can check out my video description to purchase those tools too but I'm gonna get spraying this and show you what it looks like Couple more tips when you're actually spraying too. When I'm actually spraying, I'm not carrying my sprayer over the top of the pickets and because I can actually just brush it. I come right a few inches to the top and then go back down and that overlap keeps a nice little heavy spot right there that makes it so I can back brush the top of the picket because if I go over the top of the picket, I'm sending a lot of overspray up into the air to carry off in the wind. Today's there's a little bit of wind today. And the bottom, I go just about to the bottom. Like This is grass and dirt, so I don't care if I get any on the grass or dirt. If I was on rocks or anything like that, I'd just put cardboard shields down to protect it. But here, the grass is going to get mowed, the dirt's going to get messed up, and so you won't see it. But I'm just, just watch, I'm actually getting to the top and then going right back down. And then my back brushing process is what gets the, the actual top of the picket. If you're worried about stain getting through the, the edge or the, in between the pickets and going to the other side, if you spray at an angle, you'll get, it'll minimize the amount of overspray going through the pickets. But uh, it's not going to go very far. And if you, you, only if you had something really, really close to the fence, you'd have to be concerned about it. And then you'd just end up dropping plastic or a drop cloth on the other side or we actually sometimes have another person just hold the drop cloth on the other side of the fence if there's a house really close by or a shed or something we don't want to get overspray on. 
So I'm using a 515 tip. This is a Graco Rack X 515 tip, about an 18 to 20 inch gun extension, and then my stain brush, and this is a stiff bristle stain brush. I got the pressure. It's a really thin water-based stain, so the pressure doesn't have to be up too high. I got it around 1800 PSI. The lower the pressure, the better to help minimize the overspray. I do have videos on how to control overspray that you can go check out too at the end of this video. I do highly recommend wearing a respirator when you're doing this. Anytime you're using an airless sprayer, you'll typically see me not wearing one when I'm shooting my videos because I have to talk on my videos and it's a big inconvenience to try to talk and keep taking the, the respirator off. But I typically always wear a respirator when I'm actually spraying. That respirator is available in my tool store. Also, you can find it in the video description at the end of this video. So once again, one of the key things about spraying this is don't get too far ahead of yourself. Just do short sections, because if it's really hot outside or the sun shine on the fence, the stain's gonna dry really fast and they're not gonna have anything to back brush. And the back, the back brushing uh, portion with your stain brush is extremely important to making this fence last a lot longer and look like a professional did it. So just you know do short sections and if when you get to the back brushing process if there's not enough stain just shoot a little bit more on there to wet it So on this side of the fence, the, sh the sun is shining on this side of the fence. It's a lot warmer, so I gotta move a lot faster and put a little bit more stain on to make sure I have something to back brush. While spraying, I'm actually keeping my tip and guard probably about six to eight inches from the fence, and then I'm shooting it at a slight angle because there's a house. It's a little bit, a little ways from here, but shooting it at a slight angle so it doesn't go straight through the pickets. So if you get in any situations where you need to control your overspray, like on the rocks, if there's not grass or something, the like rocks on the ground, you could just use a cardboard shield holder. And these are craft cardboard shield holders that we actually use them every single job painting exteriors, doing the houses and fences, we're always using them. I can use it, it actually just adjusts easily. I can use it to control the overspray from going over the top. I can adjust it to the ground to 
keep the overspray from going on the grass. Really convenient thing to have. The cardboard shields are extremely cheap. We just get them from our local paint store, but you can also get the shield holder and the cardboard shields from my tool store. I do get asked quite often how soon that you can actually go back and stain your fence after you power wash it. And when you're power washing it and you're using a water-based stain, you can actually go stain. We do it quite often when we stain the fence the same day. And the fence will absorb the water. It actually dries fairly fast, but the fence isn't soaking wet because it absorbs a lot of the water. And by staining it the same day with a water-based coating, it makes the stain actually come out easier. It gives you a lot more working time to be able to go back and back brush it. If you're using an oil-based stain, which we very rarely do, you're gonna have to let that fence thoroughly dry Dry, and I would let it dry for at least three to four days, even up to a week before you apply an oil-based stain to it. But that's one of the convenience about water-based stains, and I feel that they actually last a lot longer than the oil-based products now, so we're always using water-based stains. So there you have it. That's how you properly stain a fence to make it look like a professional did it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button right down there so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And we got Greg over here interrupting the video. <laughs> He's taking the place of Gamo. But, and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video and it's helped you out, don't forget to share it on Facebook, Google Plus, and Pinterest. And we'll see you on my next video. So to give you an idea, how fast you can do this with an airless sprayer. This entire fence, I'm gonna walk this distance. I did it in about three hours. And that's staining and back brushing this fence all by myself. You can see just using an airless sprayer and back brushing, getting it applied with an airless sprayer is so much faster than just dipping it out of a bucket or even using a roller or nap out of a pan or even a five gallon bucket. This entire fence, I think I got a total of 45 panels that I actually stained and back brushed. Walk around this and then there's another gate I went through to continue on this area. And all behind these trees, the fence continues behind these trees right here. I did that, you could walk through there. There was enough room to stain behind there. We come through here, back in this dog area. So I stained all this, all this right here. And then on the other side of the shed, I stained all that on the other side of the shed. I was able to walk back there. And then coming through this fence right here, just back up here, walk through this fence. And I'll show you this fence right here. And now we're at the other side of the house and that's what I completed all in a matter of about three hours today. We also painted this exterior. We're actually just cleaning up. So we got here at about 8 a.m. today and we started painting this exterior which is half stucco and the rest is sided and there was four of us painting this house. Got the house done and the fence all in one day completed it from eight and then now it's about oh look at my phone here got a pretty cool purple door there but sorry for this bumpy ride on my phone but it's 4:16 now and we started at eight o'clock in the morning